Hi everyone. It is July 1, 2019. I was sent this video by a subscriber today whom I'd like to thank. It is a very good video, but I'm just going to play the first, well, maybe a minute before you scroll down, watch this, one of the most eye-opening videos posted by Be Inspired. Very, very well done and short. The tycoons of social media have to stop pretending that they're friendly nerd gods building a better world and admit they're just tobacco farmers in t-shirts selling an addictive product to children. Because let's face it, checking your likes is the new smoking. Philip Morris just wanted your lungs. The App Store wants your soul. I used to really like Bill Maher. I don't anymore, don't respect him, but he is right on with what he just said. Yes, Philip Morris wanted your lungs, the techies want your soul. Same day, I get this article from a subscriber who wants me to debunk a study that debunks itself. This is an article posted on a study in child development. Now, unfortunately, a lot of adults are ignorant about what has happened to science and these journals. They don't understand that everything now has been co-opted, um, usurped, you know, science is fraudulent, and what is being posted in journals are the studies that industry wants posted in this case, telecommunications industry. They fund the research. They get the journals or the um, studies posted in journals. It, even the most prestigious journal out there, New England, uh, New England Journal of Medicine, is that the correct name? The editor what was this, like 15 years ago? Resigned. Why? And I believe her name is Dr. Marshall Angle. She resigned. And she said, science is no longer science. Journal articles are, you know, the studies. Um, she couldn't continue to do it. She clearly had a moral, ethical core. And, you know, she publicly speaks now on well, the pharmaceutical industry, buying scientists to publish data that is incorrect. So, it doesn't matter. Child development, a lot of people would go, oh, well, it's published in a journal. That means it's accurate. And the scientists, the researchers, must be reputable. That's out the window now. What does the article say? Oh, study shoot down text harmful effects on kids. So now what? Hey, now what? With phones and tablets everywhere, nowadays it's no surprise many parents are worried about the potentially... It's not potential. It is harmful. The, the debate is over. Thousands of studies prove that cell phones, smart meters, Wi-Fi, cell towers, all of it very dangerous. The electromagnetic frequencies are not natural. And those electromagnetic frequencies, for children in particular, it's very dangerous because their skulls and their brains are still developing. Since these frequencies can penetrate skulls, an adult skull is formed, developed, hard. A child skull is softer, still developing. So the frequencies cross 
into their brain so they go through the blood brain barrier and affect the workings in the child's brain that is still developing. Very dangerous. And any parent who could read this article and believe it is a parent that just wants to you know, keep their confirmation bias operating and their children staring at these screens because the screen, the tablets, the cell phones, the great babysitter. Um, well, here, yeah. Are worried about the potentially harmful effects screens will have on their kids. And new studies show, hey, parents, calm down. No problem. Yeah. A 2017 study in child development found little or no support for harmful links between digital screen use and young people's psychological well-being. Parents can police their kids' smartphone use if they like, but they should know such restrictions aren't evidence-based. Yeah, all of those scientists that have published articles, published real, uh, real studies, like real studies, like selected studies on the sensitivity and electromagnetic hypersensitivity. Oh, real studies, 16 pages of effects from studies. And here, all of the, the hyperlinked, you know, studies, you can, yeah, I guess all of these studies, these are the crap studies, but this study published in child development. Now, here's a real study. Yeah, digital screen time limits in young children's psychological well-being evidence from population-based study? No link. No link. Abstract. There is little empirical understanding of how young children's screen engagement links to their well-being. It's an abject lie. Data from 19,957 um, telephone interviews? Telephone? It was a telephone survey? Really? with parents of two to five year olds who assessed their children's digital screen use and psychological well-being in terms of caregiver attachment, resilience, curiosity, and positive effect in the past month? Past month? Oh, okay. So parents were called randomly, uh, asked questions regarding well, let's go down to the questions, yeah. Um, telephone interviews. You can see how the kids, you know, they arranged it for that kind of met the general population. Male and female children, two to five years old, um, were pretty much, you know, uh, split down the middle. But they used a five-point scale. One equals never, two equals rarely, three equals sometimes, four equals usually, five equals always to these statements. He, she is affectionate and tender with you. That is the statement for caregiver attachment. For resilience, he, she bounces back quickly when things don't go his or her way. For curiosity, he, she shows interest and curiosity in learning new things. And for positive effect, he, she smiles and laughs a lot. Wow! Okay. Sure had a lot of controls in that study, huh? How about controlling for subjectivity? The parents own subjective assessment of their child. Parents, most parents, well, they want to be approved of. They want people to say, wow, you're a good loving parent. So they lie. I was thinking, you know, if this survey, if my mother was called, 
she would lie outright because children and how they behave is a reflection on the parent. It reflects the parenting of a parent. Many parents give their subjective analysis of how their children are doing. Where are the controls for subjectivity? Now, have you ever taken a survey and you have this one through five scale? And don't you come across those statements and you're like, okay, this is too general. I don't know how to answer this. I'm just going to uh, answer three sometimes. You're kidding. Uh, how? Okay, well, this just shows that journals are a joke. And these studies are a joke. And it's frightening that this is published. More frightening that a whole lot of parents will use this if they've got that confirmation bias operating. And that is the scary consequence of these studies. Uh, it's empty of substance. It's a joke. It's not, it debunks itself on its face. A month. Well, it could have been a good month for that kid. You know, it, it, uh, every individual, by the way, is, uh, differently affected by electromagnetic frequencies. One person may be, may have a myriad adverse effects from the frequencies. Another person, completely asymptomatic, doesn't mean that they're not being affected because the frequencies penetrate our bodies and affect every cell in our body and eventually that person becomes symptomatic. They may not attribute the symptoms to these invisible frequencies, you know, and they're not going to admit it because they love their Wi-Fi and they're not going to give it up. But they do become symptomatic. But for children, for parents to do this, okay, so they were talking about psychological well-being. When there are so many biological effects, that affects their psychological well-being. And when mainstream media has already reported on the addictive quality of cell phones, social media, the dopamine hits that these kids are getting when they're when they get a like you know or when they get a retweet or okay um, but all right what is really interesting here is it's also been known that the Silicon Valley techies those titans raise their kids tech free why because they know how dangerous they are so if they know and they're the ones working in this industry. Steve Jobs, Bill Gates. Uh-uh, my kids, no. They revolutionized the world, but they did not allow their kids to use tech the way so many parents are using it. Um, let's see, Steve Jobs changed the world with iconic gadgets like the iPod, iPhone, MacBook. But as a parent, he was a firm believer in restricting how much his kids used tech. When one asked by when he was asked by a reporter about whether his kids love the new iPad, he replied, "They haven't used it. We limit how much technology our kids use at home." Uh, every evening, Steve made a point of having dinner at the big long table in their kitchen, discussing books and history and a variety of things no one ever pulled out, a cell phone or a computer, an iPad. Uh, the new CEO of Apple, Tim Cook, similar uh, views. He doesn't have kids, but he has a nephew, and he put boundaries on the tech for his nephew, and he said, there are some things that I won't allow. I don't want them on social media, social networks. Uh, he admitted the internet, it can be empowering, but also dangerous. He doesn't want his 
uh, nephew um, to be in the danger zone and that's why a lot of techie parents block social media uh, if when their kids are finally able to get a cell phone Bill Gates recently told how he enforces very strict rules when it comes to kids and tech and this is years ago the, this article um, we often set a time after which there is no screen time and in their case that helps them get to sleep at a reasonable hour ah yes a lot of techie parents no screens in the bedroom why because they know how these frequencies affect their sleep uh, he said we don't have cell phones at the table when we are having a meal we didn't give our kids cell phones until they were 14 and they complained that the kids got them earlier uh, former Wired editor Chris Anderson who now runs a drone company called 3D Robotics very aware of the dangers of tech my kids accuse me and my wife of being fascist and overly concerned about tech and they say that none of their friends have the same rules well their friends parents are not uh, within the tech industry and they don't get that hmm there are dangers associated with these cell phones with these tablets with these iPads so he said that's because we have seen the dangers of technology firsthand. I've seen it in myself. I don't want to see that happen to my kids. There are no screens in the bedroom, period, ever. Why? Because they know. These kids on a screen right before bed, they don't sleep well. Um, also, New York Times posted this, a dark consensus about screens and kids begins to emerge in Silicon Valley. I am convinced the devil lives in our phones. Wow, technologists know how phones really work, and many have decided they don't want their children anywhere near them. The benefits of screens as a learning tool are overblown, and the risks for addiction and stunting development seem high. The debate in Silicon Valley now is about how much exposure to phones is okay. Christian Stescher, uh, I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce her name, uh, she and her husband, who is a Facebook engineer, they researched screen time and came to a simple conclusion. They wanted almost none of it in their house. Their daughters, age five and three, have no screen time budget, no regular hours, they are allowed to be on screens. The only time a screen can be used is during travel in a car, a long car ride. Very dangerous to use cell phones in a car because the frequencies get trapped inside and swirl around uh, and you're putting yourself at greater risk. Uh, let's see, what else? Here, Athena Cabaria executive assist, assistant at um, Facebook and also works Mark Zuckerberg's philanthropic arm does not let her children have cell phones until high school she did not let her children have cell phones until high school and even now bans phone use in the car Ah, she knows and severely limits it at home her daughter did not get a phone until she started ninth grade other parents are like Aren't you worried? You don't know where your kids are? You can't find them? Not too long ago, well, kids were those free roaming kids, you know? Um, cell phones didn't exist, and wow, children survived that era. Okay, Chris Anderson, former editor of Wired and now the chief executive of a robot, robotics and drone company founder of geekdad.com said on the scale between candy and crack cocaine it's closer to crack cocaine screens technologists building these products and writers observing the tech revolution were naive we thought we could control it and this is beyond our power to control this is going straight to the pleasure 
centers of the developing brain, this is beyond our capacity, as regular parents to understand. He has five children and 12 tech rules, which include no phones under the summer until the summer before high school, no screens in bedrooms, network level content blocking, no social media until age 13, no iPads at all, and screen time schedules enforced by Google Wi-Fi that he controls from his phone, bad behavior, child, offline, 24 hours. I didn't know what we were doing to their brains until I started to observe the symptoms and the consequences. Yeah. Uh, a fleet of high-profile Silicon Valley defectors have been sounding alarms in increasingly dire terms about what these gadgets do to the human brain. Suddenly, rank-and-file Silicon Valley workers are obsessed. No tech homes are cropping up across the region. Nannies are being asked to sign no phone contracts. Those who have exposed their children to screen screens try to talk them out of addiction by explaining how the tech works. Former CEO of Mozilla, John Lilly, tries to help his 13-year-old son understand that he is being manipulated by those who built the technology. I try to tell him somebody wrote code to make you feel the way you feel. I'm trying to help him understand how things are made, the values that are going into things, and what people are doing to create the feeling that his son has. Yeah, but why don't you just give it to your two, three, four, five-year-old? And hey, who cares about what the American Academy of Pediatrics said? Recommending parents limit screen time to less than two hours for children two to five years old? And you listen to the tech giants who are, who, who, no, my child will not get any of these devices until they're in high school. Even that limitation, I mean, having a child stare at a screen for less than two hours, an hour and 45 minutes, you know the damage that the frequencies does to that child's brain? Well, the science is out there, real science, showing it. But this, this guy writes, but when researchers compared those who implement these limits with those who didn't, they found no significant difference in the level of children's well-being. Jordan Shapiro, you're a dangerous, dangerous guy. You know, when you see articles like this, go to telecommunication funding. Go to Jordan Shapiro bought off. Bought off. So, yeah, I do have, you know, I've spent eight years posting videos doing rather extensive research on these electromagnetic frequencies, on Wi-Fi, on smart meters, on, on cell phones, on all 5G. I've posted videos, facts, evidence, empirical, empirical evidence that this guy claims there's none. Oh wait, that study published in Child Development, little empirical understanding is an abject lie and you just feel like you know you get so tired but you get angry you know adults you make your own choice but you do not have the right you do not have the right to do this to your children you don't have the right and children need a loud voice. And the parents who do this, I'm sorry, they don't care about their children. There's way too much evidence now on the dangers of these frequencies. So parents can talk a good game about how much they care and love their children and go about using their subjective, you know, analysis of their own parenting. My child is just so happy and my child loves me and they love to learn and they're so curious and resilient and positive and they're happy. You don't know what goes on in that house when the door is closed.
yeah, a lot of... It's hard, guys, you know? Hey, are physicians for a safe technology? World Health Organization, 1981, Environmental Health Criteria, Radio Frequency and Microwaves, Biologic Effects and Health Hazards of Microwave Radiation. Annual Report to Congress, uh, the Administration of Radiation Control for Health and Safety Act. There's there, uh, NASA, Electromagnetic Field Interactions with the Human Body, Observed Effects and Theories, Defense Intelligence Agency, Biological Effects of Electromagnetic Radiation, Radio Waves, and Microwaves in Eurasian Communist Countries. Oh, this one has an awful lot of effects. Listed Naval Military Research and the EPA. Uh, EPA, EPA. Study of Microwave Standards, U.S. Department of Energy. Um, our government knows, Congress knows, the very dangerous effects, but hey, money, 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 money. Uh, the treasonous pigs in... I don't even want to say pigs. I'm sorry. Pigs are really very intelligent animals and wonderful. These treasonous psychopathic nut jobs who are all about themselves do not represent you. They have taken a tremendous amount of money from the telecommunications industry to lie, to get you to live in a very dangerous environment saturated with frequencies now. The standards, they're still using standards back in, what, the 1990s? They haven't updated their standards. That It's 2019 now. Um, but kids, you know, the Wi-Fi. Biological health effects of microwave radiation. Frequency transmissions, a review of the research literature. A report to the staff and director of the Eugene Water and Electric Board. 2013. Well, electro hypersensitivity, altered physiology, <laughs> altered physiology, oxidative stress, damaged DNA, risks of cell phone use, conclusions, and how about I read a few of them? Excessive radio frequency, microwave, Wi Fi, cell phones, screens for children screens for children. Um, let's see. Excessive exposure can cause acute problems, headaches, insomnia, fatigue, vertigo, tinnitus, and other symptoms. Excessive exposure can also cause chronic problems, oxidative stress, cancer, male infertility, constant transmission, probably harmful, even at low levels. Um, Nocturnal exposure, nighttime exposure. So many kids have these cell phones, screens in their bedrooms. They're sleeping with their cell phones. Nocturnal exposures are more problematic than daytime exposures because of the potential to suppress nocturnal melatonin secretion and disturb sleep. And because nighttime, when we sleep, that's when we get our rest and heal from stresses, oxidative stress. You're giving your kids these screens in their bedrooms. You're screwing up them, and you will cause permanent damage. These kids need to be kids. And I can't stand what is happening. So I will link below to everything. I will also link below to videos on my playlist. I don't want to give anybody an excuse. The link is right below. Telecommunications industry hid data on cell phones causing brain tumors lied about safety. Those cell phones that the FDA allowed to be rolled out onto the market it was already determined, hey, cause cancer, cell phones, 
Congress. Did they do any studies? Did they fund any studies of the safety of cell phones? No. No. They were allowed. So we're talking 1G. 1G. Telecommunications industry. They funded studies. And those studies proved that the frequencies from cell phones were dangerous, caused cancer. They hid the data. Scientists, a whole lot of them. So, let's see. What do we have here? Experts reveal myriad non-thermal effects of wireless, revealing telecommunication industry and government officials lie. Even Hi, CBS. Everyone. Mainstream media has reported the dangers, the link with cancer. Um, 18, 27. Can ultrasonic noise make you sick? Yes. Okay. Teachable moment. Mainstream media journalists, the number of studies regarding effects of extremely low frequency sonic weapons, infrasound, but also electromagnetic frequencies. Uh, you know, the real. Join the Royal Navy. Science. And I don't know why these keep playing. Here is Barry Trower, who was an expert in microwaves, um, the 50s, 60s, 70s, for uh, in the UK military, expert in microwave warfare. Anyone who puts Wi-Fi in schools should be locked up for life. What else do we have? Professor Martin Paul. How Wi-Fi and other electromagnetic frequencies cause biological harm. Uh, how artificial electromagnetic frequencies alter body functions, entrains your brains, the symptoms, facts, evidence, 1G to 5G, it's all dangerous. Veteran doctor drops bombshell at 5G hearing. Uh, the World Health Organization recommends one hour maximum screen time per day for under five year olds. Wow. The World Health Organization recommends even less time than the American Academy of Pediatrics. But hey, these guys, these uh, reputable researchers, come on, Carol. They were able to publish in a journal. They say no effects. That's based on our telephone survey. What are we living? What the hell are we living now? It's frightening. It's frightening. Here, another ex military microwave warfare expert, Jerry Flynn, on these electromagnetic frequencies and how dangerous they are. Studies after studies after studies, 18 minutes, biological effects of uh, electromagnetic frequencies, Wi-Fi, etc. print out, have on hand for those who roll their eyes and have on hand for people who post articles like Jordan Shapiro who needs to be smacked upside his head with thousands of studies that prove how harmful these frequencies are. And what else? How wireless technology harms people in nature. You will listen to real scientists who have conducted real studies. And the National Toxicology Program. A two-year study. $50 million. Government. American government. U.S. government. National Toxicology Program study. Our own government knows how dangerous these this wireless world is. And they found that, yeah, causes cancer. Hey, but parents, why don't you just listen to these these telephone operators who conducted this brilliant study here to tell you you don't have to worry. Let your two-year-old 
sit staring at a screen hour upon hour. There's no harmful effects. All links are below.